So now let's talk just a little bit about inadequate demand. Several economists criticized classical economic theory saying that, uh, uh, that there could be not enough to demand to buy all the stuff that is sold in the economy. Okay, so here's basically what they said. Let's say that a business sells $10,000 worth of stuff. They produce a bunch of stuff. They sell $10,000 worth of stuff to buyers. Okay, and then let's say that most of that money goes to the owners of the business. So let's say that only about uh, $1,000 goes to the labor, to the employees, and then the other $9,000 goes to the owners of the business. And what they're going to say is, this is well one of the arguments that's made, and understand I am simplifying this because we're in a principles class, is that if you divide all this $1,000 up among all the laborers, it's possible that each worker, okay, let's say that there were 100 workers, each worker only gets $10, okay? So now each of the workers only has $10 to spend, so they can't buy very much stuff that's out there in the economy. They can't be strong demanders. They can't be strong households buying from product markets, right? Where that money goes to firms. So... They can't buy very much from the product markets, so there won't be very much demand. Now, this $9,000 is really only going to one person or one household. And therefore, uh, the owner's household has $9,000. Well, what's the owner going to do with $9,000? If the owner is another person like each of the workers, the owner isn't going to buy that much stuff either. What they were arguing in one way was that more of this money should go to the workers so that there will be more demand in the product markets. Now, I agree with that to a certain extent. But that argument is overlooking something very important. And that is that this owner, let's say that the owner is only going to spend $1,000. And so the argument is that they're going to save the other $8,000, right? And so what these economists are arguing is that that $8,000 in savings is not producing anything, or it's not purchasing uh, production from the economy. Therefore, we're going to have $8,000 less in demand in the economy, and that's going to result in a weaker economy because there won't be as much production. Then people will be out of work because there won't be as much production, and all this money will just be sitting around being saved by the owner. Now, that is true if the owner takes that $8,000 and puts it in a drawer and just lets the cash sit there. But the thing is that most wealthy people... When they save their money, if they save this $8,000, they don't put it in a drawer. They invest that money in other businesses for people to borrow and spend on production. And that's what we're going to look at right now. So I want to remind you about the lesson on money and the credit market. What we learned way back was this, is that uh, when people save money, that savings is then loaned out to borrowers, right? And we have named borrowers investment. Why? Because what borrowers do when they borrow money is they spend the money they borrowed on things, on things that are produced. And so here's what's going to happen. When that owner saves $8,000, that's going to be an increase in savings in the credit market. So the savings curve is going to shift to the right when that happens. So we'll put savings prime. When that happens, that's going to cause a decrease in interest rates because savings has gone up. And when interest rates decrease, borrowers are going to be willing to borrow more. And we're going to have an increase in the quantity, so Q prime of 
borrowed funds. And what that means is this. More businesses and more individuals are going to borrow more money. And when they do that, they're going to go spend it. They're going to wind up that $8,000 that was saved by that, that owner of the company. When he saves or she saves that $8,000, um, that money is going to get borrowed by someone else who's now going to go to product markets and spend the money. And therefore, just because the owner doesn't contribute to more demand, the borrowers in the credit market, they will contribute to more demand and there will not be a loss in demand because of uh, more of the money going to the owners. Okay, And so this is just a kind of one of the small arguments that is related to the assumption that inadequate demand will not destroy the economy. And the reason inadequate demand will not destroy the economy is because there will not be inadequate demand. A loss in demand over here by these workers will be made up for over here when uh, people and businesses borrow money and then eventually spend it. So that's our second assumption. The economy won't be ruined because of inadequate demand.